Leroy, and then you uh, gotta be a kid. Yeah, no, nah, somebody had said something about the last dragon. I'm like, the last dragon on Disney is something about no a ray of somebody in the last dragon. I'm like, I'm not buying that shit, man. That juggle about to purchase it, be like, oh, I'm about to see show enough. About to drop my 30 seats to see what show enough up to. <laughs> yeah, it was, man. They, they tried to get me. Hey, somebody said they need to do a, a Cobra Kai version of The Last Dragon with uh Show Nuff, like being the main character. Cause Show Nuff would beat everybody ass in Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the old dude. The old evil dude. Danny LaRusso, dumbass, goddamn uh, Johnny, all of them. No, nah, no fucking way, bro. Old ass, uh, what's his, I'm just, I can't even think of his name right yeah. now. Huh? Yeah, Cre- Creasy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, Mr. Miyagi ain't even here, but yeah. <laughs> up with the his ass too. He's gonna go to his grave and cuss his grave out. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, showed up dirty. He disrespectful like that. Do that. Beat everybody ass. Hey, look, yeah. well, you know you disrespectful when you roll into a whole movie theater deep and then be offended that motherfuckers is talking to you crazy. Yeah. Like you ain't walk in there crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure, man. This is a head. Cannon Circus Production. Uh. And well, hey, good baby. afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Gladiator Cipher Podcast. It's your boy Split Star Lord, aka Pseudo Slim, aka Chris, checking in again with you on the one time. Go ahead and introduce yourself, fellas. Yeah, man. You know, Big J out here, Corny J. We here. We this is our first episode. We're gonna do live. We're doing it under our name. And next show will probably be under Head Cannon Circus. But uh man, we, we gotta, you know, this one's for the money. What we what, what Nas and Jay-Z, they going and do it on one on one take. We're going to do it on one take today, fellas. No, no edit. Oh, sh- Chuck. <laughs> we about to get Zuck. <laughs> you know, Power Bear Nip passed me another one. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by the letter Z, because I am tired, my man. You hear me? I'm tired. <laughs> we we switched it up so today. You- What's the meme MF of Tide? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm, I'm tired. And, uh, you know, today's episode is brought to you by Woodford Reserve. There you go. Mm. Is that yeah, the double yeah, open? Mm. Just the, the, the we had normal. To switch it up. Well, I figured because Buffalo Trace ain't gonna come up no far from them coins for us. So yeah, Woodford Reserve, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> holla, yeah. holla at your boys. Switch it up. Switch it up. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, well, Chris, get- man. What we got going on today, man? What's on the agenda, my man? Getting right into it. Um, so. You know, this show is definitely for the culture here with Gladiator Cypher Podcast. And one big aspect of our culture is a cookout life, you know, the family reunion life, the get together life. You know, if you're in Maryland like me, go get a bushel of, of blue crabs, some beers, you know, chill out with the fam. And when you're at these functions, you're guaranteed to hear certain songs, right? And one of the staple bands for these gatherings is definitely Earth, Wind & Fire. You're definitely going to hear some kind of Earth, Wind & Fire at the cookout at the function at the gathering. Right. But our very own Big J did some some sleuthing here recently and actually looked into the lyrics of, of one of their most favorite songs called Reasons. Now, I know me personally, I heard this song a million times. I never really thought anything of it. You know, it's just a dope song. I like the instrumentation and music. But Big J actually delved into the lyrics and he found a startling. Oh, no, wasn't me. This is, this is Nip here. This oh, is Nip, Nip did he it. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. The... You know, you know, he loved that. You know, come on. That's Nip Bag there. <laughs> Old school rhythm and about some freak shit. That's Nip it's Bag, Nip. man. That ain't me. It is definitely <laughs> about that freak shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nip, tell us what you found, man. So, I mean, for the longest, I thought this was, uh, you know, a love song, a love ballad. But if you look into the lyrics, Nah, baby, it's a one night stand, baby. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull up the lyrics here as we, you know, as you go and talk. So, I uh, what we got here? Hold on, I can't even see that. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, no, I got you ready. I'm gonna blow it up here. Let's start from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what we got? I'm, 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 I'm craving your body. Is this real? Temperature rising. I don't want to feel I'm in the wrong place to be real. Oof. 
Definitely not at home. Damn. <laughs> you starting off on the wrong foot. <laughs> and, you know, he did something in the wrong place to be real. So, you right. know, he, you wrong, know he's laying his back down. the wrong place to be real, right. right you know right, what I'm right. saying? Look, when be keeping real, it real goes, goes wrong. wrong place right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm longing to love you just for one night. Look, kissing and hugging and holding you tight. Please let me love you with all my might. For what? For one night, let me give you what I got. Mm. <laughs> the reasons said, that we, I got the, five minutes. The reasons that we fear our feelings won't disappear. Ooh. After the love games we play and losers is just a parade, all our reasons start to fade. You know what happened when the reasons start to fade. Oh, he got that. He got that crank he got off. That. <laughs> <laughs> What's new said? Because after I, I'm raising up out the cot. Live right, right, right. Is, we head, is we head to the parking lot. <laughs> Now, see, no, I said, I said, la la la. You know, after you get yours, it's that moment of bliss. You right. know, when you just sit there, you know, some women like to cuddle, some men like to just clean themselves up. But it's that moment where you feel like it, it, I've always call that the, the yes man moment. That's where, like, if my girl asks me, my wife asks me anything, I'm gonna go and say yes. I'm just yeah. in that blissful moment. Uh, so, I mean, what better blissful moment to be in your head singing la 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 la? Like, mm -hmm. right there, I'm right there with them. <laughs> uh huh. And after all the reasons why, all the reasons. We're alive. Mm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and after all our reasons, love was left aside. Shorty, I holler at you. <laughs> <laughs> you need the Uber, oh, like, yeah. Uber outside. Say, hey. Uber outside. Uber outside. Uber outside. Same thing. Uh, the reasons that we hear, the reasons that we feel. Oh, that's the same thing. It's, it's all the same after that. I'm, long, I'm longing to love you for one night. For Please one night. Let you That's love it. you with all my might. That's it. Hey, it ain't with the baby at the end. Hey, Maurice was cold on this one, bro. Maurice yeah. cold on this one. Yeah, yeah. He, he definitely did that one. Oh, oh here we go oh, for you now. Oh, here you go. Now, this is the best part right here. And in the morning <laughs> when I rise, no longer feeling hypnotized. You hear me? I'm cool. I'm done with you. <laughs> You had me last night when I when I was off the Wolf of Reserve, but now my mind is clear. <laughs> Find out reasons our reasons had no pride. This some shameful shit we doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> some shameful mm -hmm. shit. Oh man, did you get the outro? He, he, he uh -huh. reminds you an outro. That's it. Had oh my know. god. So look, mm -hmm. for the reasons that disappear. Oh, same thing. Yeah. Look, 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 look. When you when you put this topic up, I said, damn, Nip about to come on here and disrespect Earth Wind and Fire off the rip like this. I mean, listen. Then I read these lyrics and I exactly. said, oh, <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> Maurice White was out here for the bag. He was on the gang gang, bro. <laughs> no games played. Damn, no games I played. mean, and see, and this what goes into my point when, like, old heads be trying to be like, now, I, I agree majority with them, but when they be like, oh, y'all just be talking about all that sex and all this blah, 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 and your music, and y'all don't be talking about making love and yada, yada. And now I look at this song, and I'm like, you know how many songs I've heard this at? Like, listen, at the cookout, at hanging out with, you know, cleaning up the house on Sunday morning. You know, hell, brothers been paid this at the church. I done got to church and cleanse themselves. Yep. They didn't play there for the five the reasons. And all this long, all our parents was on some nasty MF and stuff and was trying to pretend like they was on some holy grail. Man, yeah. see, we got you again, old folks. We got y'all again. I, I will say this, though, is they did a bet. Like, we can't, we can't listen to our music around our kids. They can right. listen to all that over our head, and we could be singing it. We don't know what we're talking about. We just... <laughs> we just singing them joints. Like, now you can't do that with your kids. Well, I mean, I do it with mine, but you know. Right, 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 right. Well, you're still okay. young enough where they ain't they ain't flexing on you in the streets, though. Right. Yeah, it's like, like that. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, that's yeah, that, that still was a smooth way to 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 have the the uh way more crafty than as we lay. <laughs> oh way <laughs> more crafty than that. But that just showed you like Jay was saying a lot the of these songs, they got more multiple reason, meanings and whatnot you know what i mean like think about this like what other songs you hear to cook out uh like can they that song's about cocaine no, like, <laughs> I ain't think about it. yeah you're right yeah, there's right. a ton of these songs that you know got these meanings but like you said they look at our music yeah, like, hey, mary jane <laughs> yeah mary jane exactly oh yeah we know how mary jane get down we know how that get down but uh yeah i didn't think about that uh that cameo candy joint you're right 
Mm-hmm. I mean, but I guess that's better than uh, crack, 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 crack it up. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, people forget about that lost gym in the 80s. <laughs> I heard one the other day. It's like your mama is a crackhead or something. That was, no, that was from the 90s. That's when everybody had already yeah, got yeah. crack. That joint was crazy. Was yeah. crack, rock. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> It was fighting words. Yeah, even your mom was on head crack. Head. You gotta fight. Yeah. Can't let your moms go out like that, man. Can't let her take that L like that. That's no, nah, but that's crazy, man. I'm glad you brought that up because now I just show you how nasty our parents was, and they tried to fade the funk like they was all holy on our asses. Now we got them. Got them. Yeah. yeah. Got them out the way. Out the way. Well, speaking of getting somebody out the way, uh, we had uh, some some interviews happen over the past week with uh, DJ Academics, the the infamous internet hip hop personality uh he had some choice words about meg the stallion one of the up-and-coming uh female rappers out there uh definitely a headliner and jay you want to go into what academics was talking about oh i mean because of the topic i think it's worth talking about I- i'll let academics get this off but uh basically he made a comment about you know meg the stallion is overrated and that she can't hold a candle or anything to Nicki Minaj. Mm-hmm. He also made comments about the fact that he thinks that um, Make the Stallion's flow is lazy and mm-hmm. not creative. So, I mean, he basically just dissed this chick on all of the levels. Like, when, when I hear a guy that go at a chick like that, they're like, yeah, I mean, Meg, we can have our opinions about what we feel about Meg. But when I hear somebody go at a, a chick like that, I kind of feel like maybe Act tried to shoot a shot and she shot it down because I guess he figured because he was a short ninja and Tory Lanez was a short ninja. I figured maybe he thought he had a shot too. But mm-hmm. that was, I mean, it was flagrant. It was kind of flagrant what he said there, about her. Because no, I mean, there's, there's no way he did that. There's no way he did that. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't think, you don't think Act tried to shoot a shot? There's no way he did that. <laughs> hey, man, them Twitch dudes be on some sneak DM shit, bro. As a short, fat, ugly nigga myself, you know, you know what a, you know what a lady put a layup at, and if you do put the layup up there, you don't you don't play yourself by by bringing the spotlight to you. You yeah. just go ahead and take your L and bow out. You don't you don't start throwing shots on the internet. Nah, you yeah. don't do that. That's me. Well, it, it always hurt me when Act knew this because, like, as a corny brother myself, Act is a corny brother that made a lane for himself that I can I go say average. Yeah, that I can respect. Like, he's on it. He's doing stuff. He's making his money. He got his little fanboy, nerdy cats like that. So when, like, a corny brother just get out completely out of pocket, that should always bother me because then I feel like I got to answer to the corny motherfuckers in the room that is acting like him that's out of pocket. But with that being said, I don't – I don't I agree with Ack on that she can't hold a candle to Nikki. Mm-hmm. I don't agree with nothing else he said after that part. Like also, he made a comment about her being like only reason she's popular because she was pushed by the machine and all that. Like truth be told, only reason anybody's popular is because they get pushed by the machine majority mm-hmm. times. Now you maybe have to show your worth to the machine, and then the machine backs you after that. But right. at the end of the day, eventually, any of our mega superstars, the machine is behind them. Right. If the machine wasn't behind them, they'll just be one of those dope MCs that just don't get no play. Right. So I, I kind of feel like I, I don't know. I feel like Ak was reaching on that one, man. What you think, Nip? Uh, I'm not gonna get in, <clears throat> into the women. I, I I can't say that I listen to women's rap enough. I'm not gonna say that. I can't say that I listen to that style of female rap enough. Like I don't really listen. I'm not a big fan of Nicki. I listen to Megs like freestyles where I think she actually she really can rap. Like she can rap. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know about the whole holding the candle thing, whatever. But like, who who the fuck is academic, bro? Why is his name DJ Academic? Bro? I've never heard this nigga put a mixtape out. I've never seen him DJ a party. Like, who is this guy? Like, I like what? I don't like. I don't understand how he can just like like how he can state the culture. <laughs> like, I don't know what he could do. Like, I don't know what buddy is out here doing. Cause like, I don't I don't know. Like, I don't, I just don't know. Like, it, it seems like he don't even seem like a guy that listens to rap or like. He don't. He he don't. He don't. Then he hops out there with people that he know. Like, wasn't he cool with like six nine or something? Yeah, I think still is probably. Like, yeah, this yeah, is hard. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't got time for. But I don't want his shit, buddy. Talking about <laughs> nothing. Not a goddamn thing. Not yeah, a goddamn be careful. 
Be Especially careful. You listen to shows like this. Most. You said what? I said, be careful. He listened to shows like this to clap at us. I will beat the shit out of him. <laughs> 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 Don't give a fuck about no internet goddamn fake ass DJ. What are, what are we talking about here? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. But uh, I don't I don't think that she's had uh, in response to the actual comment, I don't think that she's had enough time to actually develop into um, uh, to develop that career yet. Like you you trying to put right. you're trying to put a career of somebody who's been out for what 10 years, 12 yeah. years, something like that, 15 years, up against somebody mm-hmm. who's only been out for like three or five years or three years or something like that. You can't, it's not it's not comparable yet. You she has, she's only put out one album. Right, right. Whatever they mm-hmm. want to call albums and EPs and all that bullshit now. So I don't I don't fucking know. But it's it's premature. I don't I she can rap. Like man can rap. I don't I don't think she's like a, a rhapsody or no, no shit like that, but mm-hmm. she can she can get busy. Actually, she, I was asked this weekend, Nip, what the, who is your favorite rapper of all time? Black Thought. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I yeah. thought your favorite rapper of all time for favorite rapper right now was Black Thought and Rhapsody. I didn't know he's your all your, your goat. No, nah, yeah, rap, rap. Well, I guess Rhapsody is new, and she would be uh she's definitely my favorite female rapper of all time so far. But she's 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 creeping towards my top five of all time. Like she's definitely the to me the best out right now. Mm-hmm. I don't think nobody fucking with her. Like I just I just don't. She so just, so she rap definitely... get one more classic album. She taking Jay Jay Z off your top five then? Uh no. Hey man, yeah, stop was... it now. Chris, Chris, what you got on this subject, man? We not doing this this week. We not doing this this week. <laughs> Look, we we ain't gonna go I, I, one full episode no. without not gonna take Jay off the top. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I don't hear to think. Yeah, they're not even they not even in my top five. Man, <laughs> no fucking don't, don't make me don't make me pull the tape again. Don't make me pull the tape again. <laughs> Look, insert it. Insert right, it. right. Every week I'm having to insert these comments from them. <laughs> There you go. But no, well, um, what you got, Chris? about the act comment, uh, I saw that. I think it's a couple things. One, um, act is just kind of weird. I don't really vibe with him like Nip was saying. He's kind of just, if if he was white, he would definitely be a, a culture vulture. Let me see. He's like, the skin, his skin color is the only thing keeping him from that. Like, No, it's not. He a culture vulture. <laughs> <laughs> um, but aside from that, um, yeah, I definitely think the the comments were out of pocket. Why I'm not gonna say that Meg is better than Nikki because Nikki's definitely had a long and successful career. And Meg's just kind of coming out. Um, I do think that Meg is a good rapper, uh, not just a female, you know, aspect aside. I think she's a good rapper. She probably has better bars than a lot of the dudes that are out right now. Um, and also, I think his comment kind of. Do y'all think it's maybe a little bit New York bias because Meg is, of course, a Southern hip hop. You know, act. She's oh. from Texas, so is he, you know, kind of riding with Nikki because she's from New York. You know, a lot of in the past has been all that New York bias, like, oh yeah, New York, we're the mecca, all that kind of stuff. When you, the South got something to say, as Andre Two Thousand famously said at mm. the the Source Hip Hop Awards. So I think that also maybe plays into it too. But I don't think Meg's trash. Uh, she's got some ways to go. You know, develop. Um, I like to see her kind of get more broad with the range of topics she covers but i mean i like her music she's a good rapper like you said she got good freestyles she can make a good song i'm definitely not hating i think he was he was super hating with those comments she what is that academic dude. from new york is academic new from new york he's from somewhere up there. yeah oh yeah i ain't know that so shit there's gotta be some type of like i don't know like she well first of all she has to put at this point right now She's she's she either has to be on the caliber of those assassin female rappers, which I don't think that she's on that level. Mm-hmm. But I mean, let's keep it a bean. She's following the template that all of them have followed, like yeah, mm-hmm. like sex sales, and that's what she raps about. Like, and furthermore, like, why would he even like you rock with Cardi super hard? Like, Car- come on, bro. Like you say that about <laughs> Meg before we talk about Cardi, and don't get me wrong, I bang with some of Cardi hit, but come on, bro. Like Shorty, she ESL. Like come <laughs> on. 
<laughs> well, let's keep it a bean. Like, every time you got to do it, it said that I was ugly. <laughs> Who says what? What are we talking about here? <laughs> For those that don't know, or forgot ESL is the part of the school where they got the people that spoke both languages. The word still clean with English. English, is put ESL, them in the English, <laughs> English is just second language. ESL, English second language. Oh man, that's English funny is shit. definitely <laughs> second language. <laughs> Shorty ESL, that's a T-shirt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna start just putting on a cape for these episodes because I feel like I'm caping for everybody. we we'll come out here with this stuff, man. Like mm, mm, you can't mm. do Cardi like that, man. No, I'm not hating on. I told I like her to the jail, but to 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 hop on Meg first, and like we just gonna breeze past Cardi non rapping ass. Like come on, bro. Yeah. Like, cool. All right, the, well, all right. Let's run it down. And I uh, obviously you take a Meg over Cardi, Chris. Meg over Cardi. Oh, uh, by far. Okay. Uh, let's go, Lil Kim or Meg Nip. Kim. Well, Kim slash Biggie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chris, Kim or Meg? Uh, right now I'll say Kim. Wow. Okay. Uh, Foxy or Meg Nip. Foxy and Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look here. Go listen to Broken Silence. That gives me all the respect for Foxy because that was after Jay. Uh, Chris, Foxy or Meg? Uh, personally, I probably take Meg. I'm not big in the Foxy. Okay, again, then listen to Broken Silence. I think it's probably her best album that nobody talks about. Um, Remy Ma or Meg? Nip. Come on, dog. Rem. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> and Chris and, and Pat. You know, I mean, Pat out here rapping about cereal and shit. <laughs> a B C D. <laughs> the A B C D cereal. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Chris. <laughs> um. I'm not even really super familiar with Remy's songs outside from the like the three super hits she had. So I probably that's hard for me. I say they're probably about even. Okay. All right. I already know we're all taking Eve over Meg. I think that's a non starter, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. All right. What about um damn, I can't think of the shorty name. Rod Digger. Rod Digger or, or Meg, Nip. I got a personal beef with Rod Diggs, so I'm going with Meg. Oh, all right, go go ahead and flesh out your personal beef there. No, get, the, get it out. Was that album that came out like 2000? I don't know what it was. I, I the, the, the shit was hyped up, and I bought the shit, and it was hot garbage, and, and I couldn't fuck with it. But but yeah, no, nah, it's definitely Meg over Rod Digger. But Chris, Ra, or Meg? I'm going to take uh, Meg. I'm not too familiar with Rod Digger, That's, aside from a couple of singles I heard. Okay, what about Trina and Meg? Yep. Oh no, that's the that's the OG. We we yeah. Trina, we going to Trina just off the cheeks. We talking about rap, but we talking about real life. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh my bad, I, I switched the conversation. My bad, I'm tripping. Still Trina though. Yeah, gotta go All with right. the baddest, right? Okay, Trina on that one. Um, Chris, you got to go with the baddest. Right? Okay, Trina on that one. Um, I already know we going light. I know we're probably already going yeah, queen. Man. Like yeah, a couple of them, I might even go on. Yeah, I'm not going to disrespect Meg with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. we're not going to disrespect Meg on that one. Oh, all right, here you go. <laughs> Lauren Hill or Meg? Nip. Because you got a lot of hate in your heart. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm not going to do it. It's Lauren Hill, man. <laughs> yeah, it. It's Lauren Hill. Chris, <laughs> Chris yeah, Lauren Hill, Lauren Meg. All right. Anybody else got I started to do it. I started to do it. It's a, it's a losing argument in the first two sentences, so I ain't got I, ain't. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I mean, I, I'm with you. I think Meg is ranked properly ranked, man. She's rated what she's rated, man. I can't, I'm not going to clap at her because she's not Nikki. I mean, mm -hmm. Nick, Nikki wasn't Nikki for a minute. Well, according to Nip, Nikki's never been Nikki because Lil Wayne wrote on her lyrics according to Nip, so. I ain't mad for that shit is whack. Mm. But well, yeah, what you say? <laughs> <laughs> right. Go ahead, Chris. But I'm I I mess with that dude the more today. <laughs> All right, moving right along. So jumping from a case of something being overrated to a new song that I think might even be underrated, despite all the hype is getting. We got a new collab with Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack called "Leave the Door Open," I believe is the song's title. Um, mm -hmm. I heard the song over the weekend is definitely a cut. Um, can't wait till the full project comes out. I forget what the name was. It Silk Sonic. Silk yeah. Sonic is the, is the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
they're gonna come out with their project. I think it's definitely gonna be some heat on there because I know personally I like both artists, so I can't wait to see the collab based on what we heard so far. And but that yeah. joint is curated by Bootsy. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh word, yes sir. <laughs> you know I'm, you Damn. know I'm waiting for this joint, bro. <laughs> drop at twelve o'clock. I'm listening at 12, 12 o'clock in, in one second. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! I mean, uh, well, well, one. I mean, how come Anderson Pack ain't a, a mega superstar yet? Like man. this dude. I mean, he just I hit after time hit, time song after time. song. Would you say, Nip? Every time he come to Philly, I go see him. It just like it, it, it. It's getting unreasonable now that he's making so much good music, and I mm -hmm. I would hate for it to be one of those situations where he becomes a mega superstar and it's closer to the end of his prime prime where. Mm -hmm. The music ain't as dope as what he's putting out now. I mean, he's just putting out just crazy shit. I mean, his last album was ridiculous because I remember he did two albums close together. Mm -hmm. and I remember the one, the first one he released was like, uh, and I think he felt that heat and it came right after it with, I think, uh, what was it, Ventura or something like that? Yeah, and uh, he, did, he did one with Dr. Dre and that shit was kind of like, it was, it was, it was mid. It was, uh, yeah, it was mid for real. Yo, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he definitely spiced the product on that one. But uh, yeah, then he yeah. came at the one. Was it was it on Arcs or something like that, or was the one Oxnard. with Trey? What? Yeah, yeah. Oxnard, Oxnard, yeah, yeah. Oxnard, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, uh, Ventura. I think that was the one he came with after that. That was right. like kind of fire to me. Yeah. yeah. But uh, now Anderson Pack is the truth, man. I mean, Bruno Mars. The, my kids love him. I mean, mm -hmm. man, Bruno can't lose, dog. Bruno, my man, dog. I I be jamming <laughs> the, the Bruno, man. Yeah, I like Bruno too. I know you're not about to start that culture vulture bullshit, man. Uh, I know I mean, we had a black we had a black history month, so I'm gonna <laughs> let him live. But uh, I, I think Bruno's dope, but it's just something about the it. Just the curl ain't quite for me. It's just something that dude missing. Like if, if he was trying to act like a cat, like uh, like like uh, like Timberlake stealing Marvin Gaye songs and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Like all right, I I was feeling. First of all, he's 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 an ethnic brother. It's not like he's the whites, you know. Yeah. What I'm saying? And, and but he and, but he pays homage. Like he clearly shows, like, hey, this is what I'm influenced by. When he makes the videos, he shows, like, all right, it's always like a, a older theme mixed with the new shit, seventies, eighties, mm -hmm. funk. He 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 puts on that. Like he even changes the way he looks with new shit. Like now, when they doing the Silk Sonic shit, he got the glasses with the thin mustache. Like he's paying homage to that shit. Like I don't, he's mm -hmm. I don't think it's a, oh I'm coming up with this new style of shit, mm -hmm. and, and 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 everybody was rocking with it. Like he, he know where he come from. He knows what sound he's chasing. Mm -hmm. He he references lyrics in, in the songs and shit. Like yeah, hey, nah, nah. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not disagreeing with nothing you saying. I, I'm, that should be no. Cool. I mean, oh no shit. I mean, it's just how again. I, I rock so Bruno is just something missing from him that just makes me be like. I don't want to go all in. Cause he ain't there. Like... He ain't got no coke protection. <laughs> he ain't, he ain't getting, he, he, that we know he, of. He Cause he be smiling like James Brown did in that interview. Yeah, <laughs> you know he, what? You know what I'm saying? He not acting that, crazy. That's what it that is. That is what it is. That Everybody, is exactly what it is. Every other dude that's, that's he not exactly he not out of interviews with Whitney Houston and, oh. and, and or, or talking crazy you like can't, James you Brown. can't get. R&B and R&B pop. If you ain't yeah, on something, that's what exactly running, what it is. Look, running running across the road off Lincoln Drive with a tranny in there. He ain't doing none of that wild shit. <laughs> that's what it is. He not a wild boy, and that's what yeah. it is. That's what it bothered me. It's hard for me to rocks with a dude. If you want R&B, that's the blues too, part of R&B. I need the blues part. <laughs> you know, you need the coke part. That's what that's you right. need. You that's the blues. Like, okay. <laughs> You, you get yeah, the blues, me just you get the coke. Yeah, you get the blues, you get the coke, you get the rhythm. So that's what it is. Like, he ain't got the blues enough so he can get an addiction so he can get the rhythm. And I feel like he just got the rhythm without having to take all the trauma from the blues. And that's what it is. You hit it on the head. That's what it, it just, it's just, it's just too smooth for me. And it, I mean, don't get it twisted. I be nodding my head and tapping my foot. You know what I'm saying? It's like Brumman with the kazoo. I be nodding my head and tapping my feet. But it's still a Brumman with the kazoo. So... <laughs> Man, uh, I'm a big fan of Bruno too. Um, like Nip said, I haven't seen nothing suspect out of Bruno yet. Uh, look at his band; it's full of, of black members. Um, 
and in the music you can hear the kind of the homage he plays to the older generations even like some of the early 90s stuff like that song he did with um cardi that was that was pretty dope it kind of reminded me of almost a, a little teensy bit of some new jack swing in there too for a little bit that's so. the only bruno song i didn't like Oh, but that shit was trash. We were talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, that shit was that was trash. <laughs> I can't remember the chorus, but I remember um that shit stunk. <laughs> I like it. Bring me, it was... baby. Yeah, it did have yeah. like kind of a joke. No, no, not the new one. Not the new one. Baby, 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 baby. Yeah. No, that shit no. was trash. <laughs> I like the one um where there was in the like the nineties get ups on the video. Uh, I can't remember. The, video, sorry, the song was garbage. <laughs> they could have kept that shit. Cardi yeah, yeah, yeah. Ass. I don't Please even know. That's what it was. Is. Please me. That's what it was called. Please me. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm talking about a different one. Not please me. Which one is it? See, that's the one he did with Cardi. Yeah, he has two songs with Cardi. I'm talking about the first one. Oh, I don't know about that first one then. Mm. All I know is that trash ass. Please me. When I'm walking with just... you, make the whole room dance. Oh, yeah, that's the joint. I feel like one Cardi on a remix of that one. I don't think it was originally. No, no, no. That was the Cardi. original song. Yeah. Uh, dripping uh, with Cardi finesse or something remix. like that. Dripping in finesse. Yeah, finesse. <laughs> don't make yeah. no sense. Yeah. yeah. I like that one. But um, yeah, yeah this song is fire. Uh, Anderson Pack, I'm a big fan. Uh, I definitely liked his latest project they came out with, but I know more so for his features. It's like. Any yeah. song he features on, it just gets that that much better to me. Um, especially working with like Kendrick or some of the West Coast artists, they really know how to lock in on that vibe. And Anderson really brings unique talents to that. Um, I just think he's a dope artist overall. Like he's very multifaceted, multi-talented. Uh, he even does like videos and stuff. I catch him on Instagram scrolling. Like he got like fun videos with his son and stuff. They'll be yeah, doing yeah, cool yeah. stuff. I think that's dope too. So all around, I think Ander Anderson Pack is a great artist. I like Jay said. I wish he would get a little bit more shine because um he's definitely uh, super talented. I'm not trying to pay them hundred dollar ticket prices. Go ahead, <laughs> that thirty five, that thirty seven ninety nine. We ain't paying for dude out here. <laughs> Give me a couple more years than regular ticket prices when you come to Philly playing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah come hopefully on, man. You he come to like the Fillmore or something. I don't know. He might be moving up though. I might have to catch him at a stadium soon. We're gonna see. But yeah, it was a dope song. Definitely a dope song. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So finesse was without Cardi. The remix is with Cardi. So, oh, okay. I yeah, yeah, so, but I, you know, I have heard the finesse with Cardi. But you're right. I think I've never really listened to the original finesse. I think I've only heard it with Cardi. <laughs> I guess I just blacked that out because Please Me was so bad. If they yeah. two got together, my blind, my mind just went blank on anything after that. Because <laughs> that shit was trash, man. I, I don't even know what Cardi was thinking releasing that. Well, I know what she was thinking. She was trying to get a pop hit, and that's what she did. But yeah, yeah. Once again, goes to that why Ak ain't going at the Cardi like that. Like they probably he got he's scared of their uh, management company. I don't know if oh, she's still yeah. with them, but you know they roll deep. So yeah, 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 yeah. they you got everybody. I don't nah, think no doubt. But no, nah, the song dope, man. If anybody ain't checked it out, I mean, I'll try to put something in the edit so people can hear it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's probably gonna get taken down because it's a new song. So I just suggest people go out and listen to it themselves. Oh, real quick, let's shout out. We got a couple comments too. Um, Troy the Barber says salute, and then we got Tamika Smith and Bakwe. Hey, cousins, I'm an Anderson Pack fan too. Hey, what's going on, Meek? Love you, love you. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to uh, check us when we start the live stream regularly. Uh, make sure you tune in, join the circus with our ringleaders. Uh, we'd like to see your comments and engage with y'all during the show. But um, in any case, Absolutely. moving along, we got one of Nip's favorite artists. What we got? At least it's a, a new three pack. Um, Ooh, oh, man. Oh, he's man. upset. Oh man! Oh, <laughs> scary man. hours. He said, "Look, he came back and said it's scary hours for Nip times two. Oh, How'd you feel about this project, Nip? Did you give it a listen? I did listen to it. Ah, so the I, yeah, the first one I I feel like was kind of like a throwaway. You throwing your you giving your chain away, you throwing the fame away. I don't that yeah, I'm I'm cool. I'm cool off that. I don't know what you're talking about, buddy. Uh <laughs> I feel like he little baby smoked him and uh <laughs> once it needs on, on, on the second joint, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he he didn't want no problems with little baby on that joint. And nah. yeah, yeah. I, I gotta go back and start listening to some little baby. If 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 he giving it up like that. 
Yeah, I, I, I gotta go. I gotta go back and listen to it. I, I listened to one other joint we had with uh, all the uh, all the George Floyd and all that shit was was going on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that song's hard. Right. He tore that one up too. So I, I gotta go back and listen to some Lil Baby. Uh, the joint with him and Ross, I, I, I probably could have did without it. I probably could have did. You ain't, it. Like, you ain't like Ross flowing that. Ross, I think Ross is in that pocket, crazy on that man. No, nah, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know. That, I like Ross. I, I don't know. I've heard a lot better shit from Ross. Like a lot better caliber shit from Ross, man. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't smooth enough. It wasn't buttery enough, man. I don't know. It, it wasn't. It, it it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't there. It didn't stick to the ribs. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, the margarine but, flow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He had, some, he had some vegetable oil on that shit. Damn, shortening. Uh, no, damn, I ain't gonna do the vegetable oil like that, man. <laughs> yeah, couldn't, couldn't believe it. It wasn't butter. No, nah, we got to. Uh, <laughs> I mean, actually, I feel like this. This is like the second one recently with Ross and Drake. What a Ross and Jake song ain't really been like popping like that. Mm-hmm. I know they early stuff together used to always go go off, but I feel like yeah. the last couple, one or two, two or three, been kind of like, uh, like yeah, if you blink, you'll miss it. Like it, it wasn't nothing that stood out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think the project was dope. I liked it a lot, actually. Um, I was glad to see some more bars from Drizzy. You know, not so much singing. Um, because I appreciate when he raps. I think he's a great rapper, and I like the uh, <coughs> music that he put out this this recent one. Um, I would say yeah, that Ross track is not all that. Why you almost like, killed it by saying that, Chris? Come on, man. You can't do stuff like no, that. No, that was a Wilford. Yeah. It went down the wrong pipe. You just ain't seen him. Yeah, sure, stuff. sure. No, he heard yeah. he heard great and rap and Drake all in the same sentence. Yeah, you that was killed that man. Yeah, man. You can't take that from him. You can't take that from him. <laughs> but well, um, I'm sorry, my bad. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a good good three pack. Um, I like the first two songs better than the third one. I'll say that. Um, I feel like I don't know. It's like you said, just the last cu- couple pairings with, with Ross and Drake have been a little lackluster. I'm hoping maybe they got something coming on uh, Drake's album, The Certified Lover Boy, that's a little bit more grandiose. I like Ross on those big orchestral beats, you know, really thumping percussion, maybe have some some triangles, some horns, something else on it, something crazy. Uh, I feel like that's when he, he really does his best. But the songs were cool. Um, I'm waiting for the album. I don't really understand the need for another three pack unless he's pushing back the album yeah. a lot more than we considered. I'm like, yeah, dang, I thought this COVID stuff was going to come man. out last month. What was that? Got to wait till the COVID is over. Got to be able to tour them things. Yeah. Can't tour them if, if everything shut down. Well, in that case, he might as well just make a whole mixtape and just drop it. I mean, he got that knee injury, man. Remember, he got that knee injury. That's why he can't drop. But sorry, yeah. The knee. Oh, look at man. I thought I thought that uh three pack was some old bush league booty. Um, I, I mean, the limit only I fuck with on it was baby versus going off. Mm-hmm. And like I told you, Rick Ross is in the pocket. I love hearing the rapper to get into the pocket because that's a lost art of rappers being able to get to a beat, get into the pocket, and keep their flow with the momentum of the pocket and the beat like that, like that. I feel like not enough rappers could do that very well. And Ross is the king of it, so he gave me that. I got little Baby. So that's what, uh, 16, 32 bars out of a whole project? Man, that's just ass, bro. I'm getting tired of caping. Everybody caping for Drake because Drake come out and it's all this big moment or whatever. Just call stuff like it is, man. We're not going to listen to this three-pack in, in a week. This shit going to be done with. And it's only three songs. We ain't going to listen to this shit no more. Like It's a rap on that. Like I'm yeah. like, y'all, he need to just drop the album. And, and he got to show something because uh, I won. I didn't think Scorpion was that good either. So for me, he coming off an L. So he got to come back with the dub here. If he's supposed to be one of the greatest is, or as Chris says, a, a great rapper, he got to give me a dub here, man, because uh, that Scorpion shit was not popping either for me. This three pack wasn't popping. It's scary hour. I, that's why it's called scary hour because you fucking listen to this shit. You scared to finish the album because it's terrible. Like, turn that shit off, man. Like, just don't. I don't, I don't want to hear nothing else from Drake until it's the album, man, because. This is that was trash, man. Like no, you, you plan, it. you you plan to put this out too. So you thought in your mind this was hot shit. I think and these nah, are just man. throwaways. I don't think he thought these are the greatest. Here you go, right? Jay. Hate, hate, hate. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace the dark side. <laughs> nah, because see, this what happened. This what going on. Because Nip out here trying to take it easy because he know too much as a hater. Chris, he, he kind of halfway caping for him because he know that Drake can put out quality. I'm gonna keep it real. I'm judging it on these three songs. This shit was terrible. 
And I'm mad that I put it on my phone and listened to it in my car. I listened to it three times because I was like, Damn, maybe I don't phone? like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, maybe I don't like it because <laughs> I'm just in a different mode, a different environment. Man, let's do it three times. I was, no, this is, I don't like it because it's booty. That's what mm-hmm. it is. It's straight, it's straight African underprivileged booty right there. That's what it was, man. I'm mad he even mm. gave me that in this moment of time right now. That's terrible, man. Shame on Drake for taking my time up for that, for that crap that he Two tried things. to give me right there and pawn it off. Two things. I had my cat, Mushu, I wanted, I wanted to come on the camera and call you a hater for hating on Drake. <laughs> <laughs> but he got tired of hearing the BS, so he's like, man, let me go back to the couch. <laughs> And two, man, how you gonna slander the motherland like that, man? Come on, we look, we just got coming hey, to look. America too. Hey, look, man, we all know where it's where it's, where it's really really hot. The asses be stinking, dog. Let's stop it. We know that, like we know that, man. They got so be on... them, look. They taught the the white man. <laughs> <laughs> look here, we know Philly get hot. We know Merlin get hot. When y'all be coming off of work, that crack of that ass be smelly. That's what that pet <laughs> three pack was, bro. It was some smelly butt cheeks, man. And I'm mad that he put that out here for us because. Get fuck the hell with that, man. Because if Jay-Z would put out a smelly three-pack like that, we'd be ripping his ass up and down the street if Jay-Z put that out. Kanye yeah. would have put out a smelly yeah. three-pack like that, we'd yeah. have been ripping Kanye up and down the street. If Drake he, put out he, a smelly three-pack. Like, oh, like that. We ain't going to talk about it. Oh, right oh here you. No. No, we not. We not. Oh, you, you mean Drake? Yes, Drake has put out albums like that. And then so, they talk about Jay-Z. Hey, nobody's talking about my Jay-Z on this album. <laughs> volume 2? Stop it. Mm. Stop it. You right. Stop it. You're right. We we not gonna volume, do that. Volume, volume three, we ain't gonna talk about it. All right, volume three, you maybe you may be able to get something off on volume three, but you're not gonna get it off on volume two. All right, I'm gonna I'm right. bring another. Well, this this shit sparked this whole Drake joint sparked the conversation at work today. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and we probably not gonna have enough time for today. We we can we can table it for next week. So uh, the youngest talk about start talking about Drake is the goat and all this shit mm-hmm. and everybody go to what exactly? That's the same thing all the old heads in the in, in the shop said. The joke ain't never made an album where he rapped the whole album. But then I had to argue with the older cats because then these niggas start talking about Tupac. Oh. Tupac is a what? Is a is is a goat, is a top five cat. And I said, Tupac only got one classic album. Uh, what would say? All Eyes on Me was a classic. That's it. My, you, ain't, you ain't rock with Mach- Machiavelli? Nope. Name a song off Machiavelli. <laughs> <laughs> What uh, what uh, the him and face joint off Machiavelli? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it was on, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that that's wasn't Machiavelli. Um, all no. I want to you. That was, um, uh, uh, what's the other one? They all hate me or hate me now or me against the world. That's the joint with him and face was on me against the uh, world. Uh, you, know. you may be right on that one, man. I gotta bring in a, a Tupac expert because you know, I was driving with the East Coast, and so I was on, on an F Tupac mode, so. I got. I'll, I'll look that up uh, while we go through it. Uh, but so people, they so they started talking that uh, Pac is the the goat. Then, yeah, and that's that's uh no, yeah, that didn't come out till ninety seven. The uh, smile for me. Mm-hmm. That was yeah, that wasn't on that. That's no, like no, posthumous, no. huh? Yeah. Okay, yeah. hold on. So two apocalypse now. It was good, but I no, it was not. Bad. No, let's not do that. But we gonna was, stop. It was good. Two apocalypse now had one song, one song <laughs> on it, and it was Brenda had a baby. Brenda's got a baby. What other song was hot off of Tupacalypse Now? Young Black Man was cool on Tupac. I'm saying it's good. I ain't saying it was great. Like, yeah. you can listen to Tupacalypse Now and probably skip about three songs and still be all right with the album. Okay. It was it was mid. It was average. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, all right. All right. I would say average. Then. All, all right, right, all right, all right. Um, then we go on up to Strictly for My for my Niggas. Okay, let's keep yeah. going. That's tough. Uh, be Against the World. Average, maybe. I- but look, I got a question for y'all. Branching uh, off of that. Uh-huh. Now, this might be kind of a wild question now that I'm thinking about it and signing it out in my head. But let's say Morpheus pulled up on you in the leather chair and he had the red pill and the blue pill. He's like, look, take the red pill, Pac lives and continues rapping. Take the blue pill, Biggie continues to live. Biggie. And continue to rap. Biggie. <laughs> Fuck what you talking about. Biggie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had two albums and had two classic albums. Yeah. Like two, what Tupac album is better than Ready to Die? No. No, Biggie was different, man. I'm what Tupac like, album is 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 is, is better than uh, uh uh Life After Death? 
He exactly. made some classics. We're like, not his, get, his I, bar I really look at up. A good album. It's only all eyes on me. <laughs> <laughs> you search it. It's only all eyes on me. He had one good classic album, and the rest of that shit was <laughs> garbage. It was. Look, you don't remember no song. All, every Tupac song that niggas know is from All Eyes on Me, Brenda's Got a Baby, and Dear Mama. That's it. That's it. Look, man, be like this one or this two. Which one? That's it. That's it. And the what was the joint that was on? Uh, on uh, uh, what was that? Bombs Away or Bombing on them or Bomb, whatever that shit was. The Biggie joint. That's it, bro. That's mm. it. I don't understand right, how right. niggas is putting Tupac on his pedestal. Like, the hey, only look. other people that know Tupac song like that is niggas that's like, oh, super Tupac fans. Mm -hmm. Nobody but knows I, this What I'm debating is not even debate of the album. The debate is like me against the world. I'm trying to remember because I admit, like, I, I'll be honest because I just admitted it. When Pop was doing this thing that had the East Coast, West Coast stuff, I was riding with Biggie. So I wasn't rocking with Pac. I wasn't like how we remember rock. I mean, me and you could vividly remember riding in the lack. With Biggie on right. and doing our thing, I don't have any moments in my youth with Pac at all. So it's harder for me to think about. It. I really start listening to Pac till I got pretty much into college. And I mean, for me, me the only the world, Pac song that, that I, I would say it was like that was the California Love with Dre. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. That was. But, I mean, me against the world. I mean, if I die tonight was a banger. Me against the world was a good one. So many tears was a banger. Temptations so now, young niggas. Uh, so many tears. Um, Dear Mama's on that one as well. Lord knows his eye too. Mm -mm. Can I get a and fuck the world? I mean, it, it, he has some on, but mm -mm. I gotta listen to it again. I, I'm gonna say this. You're right. We made the hold this to next week. So I gotta listen to it again. But not better. Than I feel like me against the world will probably can rank up there as a as a classic for for most. Okay. I'm not saying it is. I, I gotta listen before I go. I'm just saying I think most people will say those two are his classics. Against against what other classic album from top five niggas? You gonna put that shit against Reasonable Doubt and Blueprint? You gonna put that yeah, shit against on. Goddamn Doggy Style? Illmatic. Yeah, doing that? Well, for him to be in that category, and we got to sit up here and go through songs with chick, you know, no, hell no, hell, to the motherfucker, no. <laughs> Snoop, Snoop got a classic album with Goddamn. Um, uh, every song on it is a fucking hit. Every song on Doggy Style is a hit. <laughs> Welcome to the Jack Alfire. This is. DJ Easy. <laughs> oh, man, what are we talking about? We talk Come on, all eyes on me. That's Tupac album. Everything else, we can trash it. Like I said, I'm going to reserve it so I go through my week of, of going, but I, I feel like you may be right on this one, but I feel like it's too much love for Pop to just concede that so early. I mean, it's I, a single, I, but I agree with that. I, I, I think I ain't lost in the music take over here yet. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Wait, hell yeah, you lost. You lost. Them Philly cats took an L. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> You talking about New York City them Philly cats walking home. We just ain't lost a, a music art, man. You better get out of yeah, here. You about to come to your house, man. Look, <laughs> hey, boy, you ain't represent the city right, man. Right, right. <laughs> hey, lost yeah. That joke, it was like seven to three. We're <laughs> <laughs> about to come for a nip neck, man. How you ain't represent the city right, man? You gotta take a big L. Damn. No, uh, no. Nah, nah. All right. Well, I'm going to let you I'm gonna let you take that one, so. Uh, but they were talking about uh, Pac is in there and, oh, and Drake being the great. Man, I, I, we can't handle Drake being in, in the GOAT conversation when I haven't yet to hear an album from Drake when he raps the whole album. So that alone eliminates me, you, from the GOAT conversation in my, my eyes. You got to at least give me one album where you rap the whole time. Like, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, would you consider then, um, I'm trying to think. Like 50 heat. Well, I'll say some he sings sometimes, but it's not as he doesn't get so into the melody like Drake. So Ooh, 50? Yeah. 50 is mean, 50. On hooks. He ain't never sang a verse. That's true. But 50 ain't in my goat conversation either. So I mean, yeah, that's true. I mean, now, now, well, goat, now goat is a businessman. Oh, well, I mean, he just had uh what's the name? The yeah, first one. I feel like this is only yeah, that's only classic. Mm -hmm, for sure. And I think the rest of them after that was all right. Like mm -hmm. I would take DMX before I take 50. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm a huge X fan. That's... I'm just going with the whole short career of classic range because X, I mean, those first two albums is classics off the rip. And I think after that, X is kind of. You don't even got an album that fought with Dark as Hell is Hot. Man, we ain't you know what? Well, well, hold on. Slow down now. Dark as Hell is Hot is one of the best albums, hip hop no, albums running. Though. That's what I'm saying. 
Tupac can't fuck with that album. Oh, oh, I get what you're saying. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, look, man, I gotta listen, man. I I can't make no comment on it because I don't man, know. Save your time. Just look, it's cemented. We we it's documented. You don't <laughs> well, what did the old heads say then? When you said this, what did they say then? They started trying to pull up, pull up songs and albums and shit. They didn't even know how to do it. Looking at them like, I'm waiting for y'all motherfuckers to show me another classic like, like album. This. <laughs> it's right here. Hold on, hold on. Give me. Yeah, it's all here. Oh, oh, yeah. oh no. Oh, this song right here. You ain't remember this? No, that shit was not on the radio, my man. That shit was ass. No, no way. Who's a good no Gaddafi and Mussolini and do it for you? Same argument. I said, what Tupac album is better than Ready to Die? And everybody got them got them peanut butter in their mouth. I'm, 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 I need somebody in the thread to help me because I, I don't know enough about Pop to have that conversation totally. How, be somebody in the thread. The, the Tupac had more than one classic album. Never saying he only had one classic. Was all was what was it? Um, me against the world was that considered a classic? Or no, all eyes on me was the was the only classic he had. Okay, mm. somebody in the thread answer that because uh. Uh, Pop got b- about more tracks, but Big got better albums. I mean, that goes to Tony's point. Then, shout out to Urban. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two, two albums, two albums. He did that. Mm-hmm. But you wow. admit that Pop got you. Bet Pop always had bigger songs. So you you could admit that, right? Bigger and than that's two- why people's. Yeah. I mean, if, you, uh-huh. if, if y'all want to say that, go ahead. Go ahead. You can have I it. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. <laughs> you can have it. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Because we got what I, we got Juicy, One More Chance. Hypnotize. That's what that was like, Banger Bangers and Hypnotize. I mean, that's pretty, and Benjamin's, which wasn't on Biggie's album, but he was on it, so I give him that. Problem. Who shot you? Okay. I mean, that wasn't, a, that wasn't like big, big. Like, most people, most white folks didn't know that, don't even know that song. Oh, Now you're right. going with Pac, yeah. you got... You got Hail Mary, you got Changes, you got Brenda's Got a Baby, you got Dear Mama, you got Ambitions of a Rider, like, oh, uh, what's the joint? Toss it up. Well, that, I mean, that's for us, the nerds, but that one, like, again. So it's Hail Mary. Ain't I, no... <laughs> oh, you talking about Hail Mary was on the radio like crazy. Well, maybe when we become, where we was at, oh, yeah, Hail Mary nice. was on the radio like crazy. Like, it was. It was. I mean, it like, was. yeah, I mean, he, he, the song, I think that's what it is with Nippa saying. Nippa's mm-hmm. right. The songs that Pac had was so huge. That I think we forget that the albums weren't as huge as they the songs. Were. The, al- the albums were <laughs> ass. Except for all eyes on me, the albums were trash. They were. Who better? Who had the better Bone Thugs collab? Biggie. Biggie. Yeah, yeah we ain't gonna do that. We ain't got trouble with that. Well, well, Herb, I'm going with the white folks because when I say a big song, the only way a song is really, really big is if white folks jump on it. Let's just call it what it is. Like it's it because a lot of songs is big in our community. That white folks ain't never heard of. Uh, pull up a Luther Vandross song. How many white folks know about that shit? But if you pull up a Luther Vandross song in front of black folks, oh, it's game over. Like, there's a bunch of white folks that don't know who Luther Vandross is. They be like, why, why are you playing this? <laughs> why are you looking at me with them eyes? <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, put on some Bruno Mars in a minute. Uh, but go ahead, man. <laughs> I ain't going to hold right, you. I'm, let's I'm, let's I'm move ride. right along. <laughs> I'm right with you on that one, Dip. We're getting towards uh, the later topics here in the show. So, um, Definitely saw some division online through the different social media channels with regard to Coming to America, the sequel to Coming to America by Eddie Murphy. Um, I know me personally, I haven't seen the movie, but I definitely saw a lot of debate back and forth. Some people saying they they loved it. Some people saying they hated it and they shouldn't have made the sequel. Um, I'm reserving my judgment until I see the movie and I'm going in with open eyes and open ears i'm not no prejudgment i'm gonna just see if i enjoy it and i'll go from there but gentlemen did you all see the movie and then too if you did how did you feel about it yeah we saw just preemptively we're going to tip no spoilers but if spoilers do come out our bad you've been warned so if you're listening from this point forward if spoilers come out this is on you but damn, yes said, we, screw me huh damn uh, uh, <laughs> again we're going to try not to but i don't want nobody to be like oh spoiling you know how people get with spoilers man i done had jokes come from my neck on accidentally saying the spoiler so i just want to put that up front that if we accidentally spoil something our bad but uh it is what it is how do you um, have a spoiler for coming to america Come on, man! Watch, stop it! Uh, <laughs> Shout out to uh, Irvin in the, the comments. He said, "Oh yeah, Birdman rubs hands. Let's talk." It's the same. <laughs> Let's get to it. It's the same movie. It's the same movie all over again. What are we talking? What? Well, well, in reverse. Exactly. It's the same movie. It's coming to America. <laughs> what are we talking about here? 
Uh, did you like it, Nip? Because we had we didn't had so many debates off camera about black movies and how you feel like black movies is always on some suffering. And I didn't tour the soil for so long. Nice it's my time like to be free. Uh, so I liked it, but I came in. I don't think I came in with the same expectations that everybody else came into it with. I'm okay. not fucking eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old no more. The, the movies don't give you that same feeling anymore as when you were a kid, number one. Number two, it was PG-13. Mm -hmm. You should have knew. Eddie ain't made a, a raw-ass movie like that in a long time. It was yeah. Matter of fact, then coming to America, Boomerang, like them, that was when Eddie was starting to like come down and come away from that super raw shit. Like, it mm -hmm. wasn't... Um, well, life, life was R-rated. Yeah, but it still wasn't like Raw Eddie, that was hey, look here, man. Everybody hey, else, hey, hey. you better stop it. You better not try to shit on no, life. Now. It was a good, it was a class, it was a great movie. I love life, okay. but it wasn't, okay. it wasn't, you know, goddamn man and tailpipe and all that cool shit. Like, it was no, it was no, it wasn't fucked up afro, Eddie. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't that. It wasn't, it wasn't hot ass leather suit, Eddie. No, 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 no way. It was that was that was a different action, dog. It was, it was different. But uh, uh, for what it was, it, it was a good movie. Like I, it was what I wanted. I saw everybody I wanted to see except Sam Jackson. That mm. was some bullshit. Where the yeah. fuck was Sam yeah. Jackson? They, they should have had every other movie on the planet it. except for this one. Huh? He's in every other movie on the planet except for this. That's crazy. Yeah, right, right. And I know Sam Jackson's role was only like three minutes in the first one, but it was a lot of classic <laughs> lines. Out of that fucking McDonald's robbery, dog. Yeah. And they should have had Sam Jackson back in that joint, bro. Yeah, I agree. They should have like had. Him. They should have had Sam Jackson come back as like a manager of like uh, McDonald's or something. Like he changed yeah, his life. Right, right, yeah, right, yeah, it's right. something dope. Right. Like I feel, right. I feel the same way. Oh, mm -hmm. but here's the bigger question. I'm gonna be real, and this is no spoilers, but this is the real question: is so is that barbershop like in a time cryo chamber or something where them motherfuckers just don't age? Because them motherfuckers was old in 88. And this this been just this as a barber, the barber should have been dead. The barber, that, that, that was the only other crazy thing I had. Yeah, that nigga should have been dead. That yeah. nigga's 85 and 88. Like, what, they, what they, 130 now? Hey, what? look. It must be a cryo chamber that in that barbershop. That there you Alkaline go. That's water. what it is. You know what I'm saying? Vitamin B. <laughs> they want to live. In, man. They got the hey, time look. stone from uh, Thanos. They <laughs> Just turn it back. <laughs> Just turn it back. Um, and then I know I see a bunch of small time people. Hopefully, it doesn't become a big thing. Like they're talking about how how homeboy was conceived. It was it consensual or not, and all that shit that we happen to talk about now with council culture. And I'm like, it's, it's a comedy, guys. Like it it was supposed to make you laugh. I know some people may be triggered by it, and mm. I'm not undermining their experience, but it was supposed to make you laugh. All of it was a lead up to make you laugh and enjoy your time. So. I do want to address what? that. What? A guy, a guy got date raped. Yeah, yeah. A male. Yeah. <laughs> look, look here, man. I'm just hey, saying. I heard the rumblings. I just heard the rumblings, and I just want to address it. That's all. <laughs> also, well, speaking of that, this is probably the first movie I ever watched with Leslie Jones and annoyed the fuck out of me. So, shout out to Leslie Jones. That is true. Uh, yes. Finally, yeah. hey, big up to Leslie Jones for that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, when I saw her in this, I was like, oh fuck, here we go. <laughs> like I saw, I saw Ghostbusters. Here we yeah. go. Oh, I didn't. Watch, <laughs> I, didn't I definitely watch Ghostbusters. I didn't. I didn't watch that. Nope, it wasn't happening. So now, nah, but oh, but going to review now. Nah, I thought it was dope, man. I thought it was good. A lot of black excellence. I mean, for me, the opening up of it and just seeing just black folks on top of black folks, and you get the cameos and the celebrities that stepped in there. You know, you know, a very prominent guy. You know, the voice of God got to speak at it. Right. You know. um, uh, right. it, it just it was a lot of black and so it already had me in the mood with just seeing right. all these black people in this movie and it wasn't on no coonery it wasn't on no like it wasn't on no bullshit let's like, call it what it was mm -hmm. i was waiting for the bullshit coonery moment i was waiting for the moment where they were like they just get like oh when his son introduced he's gonna be on some cool stuff like nope he wasn't selling drugs he wasn't no pimp now was mm -hmm. he doing some shit with tickets but we didn't all been there before even in the barbershop when a dude made an ignorant ass comment, they got him to fuck up out the barbershop too. Yeah. He's like, nah, you gotta get about my yeah. chair with that. Like, that's so true. that's I, true. For once, we got a, a movie, black movie that we all wanted to see where it was positive, it was fun. And for the people that are out there hating, 
if you guys are trying to compare the classic of coming to America to coming to America now, you're out of your mind. I, this is a movie I felt like it, this. I feel like this is a, this is called a gateway movie to me. This is something that I can watch with my daughters and mm -hmm. go, "Hey, the original." When you get a little older, we'll watch that together, we'll watch that together because right. they like this one, right, right, right. And so right. that's what I looked at it as. And like I told, I think Irvin, I said Irvin the same thing. I'm like, it was like me. Have you ever we watch those old TV shows and they have a reunion show mm -hmm. and they bring right. everybody back and it's like situational right. sitcom vibe and feel, yeah. but everybody yeah. just. Everybody's acknowledging it's a reunion show, so you're playing into it just to have the characters back and have fun. That's what this felt like to me. It felt like a he had to, show. He, probably, he had probably had to put some work in to find a couple of them people that, that came back. He Hell had, yeah, he had to working to find some of them people, bro. He Hell did. yeah, and then um, the star of the show, though, hands down, besides Tiana Taylor with her fine. So the star of the show, Wesley Snipes, man. Wesley been killing everything. I was just about in, to bro. say that. Wesley, Wesley had been the best West African <laughs> accent. Wesley had to come on, dog. Wesley, Wesley had that shit, dog. What's what? What? Yeah. Look, well, you know the rumor is back in the day, Wesley wanted to make Black Panther, but they wouldn't let him do it. That's why he ended up making Blade. So mm. part of me feels like all that training he was getting ready to do Black Panther, he finally got to use it here, man, because he was on cue, bro. Yeah. Like Wesley was the man on this one, man. Yeah. So now nah, I got nothing but positive things. You ain't gonna get me to hate on this, man. We finally got a black movie without suffering, with a good message, with some positivity, and just. Black people with royalty being kings and queens like we are, no stupid shit. Look, I'm here for it, man. Like, just give me more of it. I mean, yeah. So everybody that was hating, y'all can y'all can eat a dick, man. I'm gonna just go out and say it, man. If you hating on this movie, just eat a dick at this point for me, man. Because you ain't gonna you ain't gonna be happy with nothing then. Yeah, yeah. Some you know, I I definitely understand people uh, being critical, but it's like you know certain stuff we don't see from other cultures, right? Like, I don't see a lot of Asians or. You know, Jewish folk or uh, Latino folk, you know, going if there's a movie that is decent, but like not the best, just jumping right out and shitting on it out the gate. You know what I mean? Like, right. we, like we, we, I think we should have a little bit more culture about the stuff that we produce. And, um, you know, even I think they, I saw some of the writers or something like that might have been white. That's the case. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's still Eddie Murphy headline in the movie. You know, Eddie is like an A on top of A list celebrity. Like, if, he didn't want some in the film. It wouldn't have been in there. So we can't downplay some of their power behind the scenes and just their, their cachet that they carry. So I definitely would like to see going forward, you know, we give more stuff a chance, you know, let it settle a bit before we just go on and land back something online and what? have people not necessarily want to watch it because they see a bad review. But that's Twitter in general. You know, they always go mm -hmm. in on something. So what other movie have you seen? I think I only saw. One Caucasian in this movie. <laughs> well, Louis Anderson. That's it. Yeah. You yeah. recall any, any other person? Yeah, no, you're right. Hell, even on the streets. I don't think I even saw a white dude in the streets when they was exactly, yeah. Exactly, bro. All that money, all that production. And come on, man. We ain't we ain't about to talk the cultural the significance of the movie, though. We ain't gotta talk about that shit. Like that's mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's I mean, I also I mean I, I do. It goes to a point now, I, it's not a negative because I understood what was trying to be done. I felt like besides, out of all the main main character cast, I mm -hmm. felt Eddie was the weakest because I was expecting something from him, but then if you watch it, it feels like Eddie was trying to put other people on. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe, maybe I only felt that way, or maybe I only got that, but I don't know if you felt that vibe, Nip. Like, like, I was expecting, like you said, like again, I was expecting some Eddie Murphy joke jokes but I feel like he was more focused on getting these other people set up and getting them on rather than him getting his shit off. Cause I feel like he, I mean, he, you know, he got enough money. He can get his off whenever. I feel like he was trying mm -hmm. to feed the masses on this one. I don't know. What did you feel on about Eddie's performance on this net? Or well, Eddie's just fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's just call it what it is. Like it's, it's just, old. Like, he's just, old. he ain't, you can't bring 84 jokes to 2021. It just don't work. I feel like nah, it's the same right. reason why we haven't gotten that stand up yet. It's just mm -hmm. it ain't gonna it ain't gonna go. Everything you said, even in the bar, the I think the barber that barbershop scene was the best drain. Like you know what I'm saying? You can't you can't you can't even grab a titty without getting in trouble no more. Like you're not saying. <laughs> and I get that it was a joke, and it was like you know I'm sorry that you can't touch women and that whatever whatever mm -hmm. like which that's not cool. Touching people that don't want to be touched is not cool. <laughs> what yeah. I'm saying is the fact that. You know, like vulgar jokes and like talking about and, and making light of stuff that's like 
sensitive. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Like uh, that's not socially acceptable and shit like Being that. Being a comedian, like, basically, do it no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they yeah, do it no more. So I don't I think mean, that, I don't think he can crack the jokes that he mm-hmm. wanted to crack in the, in there. It just, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, again, I, I, I'm with you on that one, man. I, I think, I mean, that's a whole other discussion for another show. What we could do about council culture and how council culture inside of our culture is probably like a double negative bar because we already have immediate cancellation when we walk outside of our doors. Mm-hmm. And then for us to be on each other the way we are, I mean, that's a conversation we can have another day. I know everybody want to hear that crap right now at the end of the show. But uh, but Nick, you're kind of right. We got to cancel. Cause we, we gotta niggas, stop. You didn't try to cancel Pepe Le Pew. Nigga, what is wrong with y'all? Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> Hey, Peppy was kind of aggressive, man. Yeah, no Peppy was no a little deal. wild in the streets, man. I can't, I, I can't be mad at that. I mean, you can't be mad at Peppy getting canceled? I can't be mad at it, man. Was, I can't be mad at it, man. That cat is still traumatized somewhere. She can't get the, the white pink stripe off her back. She's like, Peppy said, I'm going to leave you alone. Peppy said, I like you. Window. I want Come you. On, <laughs> and I'm going to have you. <laughs> that means that I'm going to put this stripe on your back because I like you. Product, I want you. And I'm all gonna ass you. niggas out here, man. You can't get what you want out here without without going after it. That's what Peppy taught me. You know what I'm Look, saying? That's what he taught me. Going after it and taking it. <laughs> and he was taking it. Go for what you want. <laughs> we done here tonight. You, and if she don't want to give it, you take it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey Chris, what have you been listening to? Damn, what have, what have I been listening to? That's a good question. Uh, earlier, I was cooking and, and doing dishes. I was listening to some Duke Ellington. Okay, so I had to Duke. bring it back. Um, I was listening for like a, some jazz, but I wanted some upbeat kind of big band style jazz for a little bit. So I know Duke's definitely got that in his catalog. So I, I was playing that a little bit earlier. Y'all definitely go back and check some of these uh, jazz legends out because their music really holds up. Um, all sorts of different emotions, all sorts of different vibes. So definitely get into it. But yeah, that's what I've been listening to lately. Okay. Well, any particular song for, for Duke that you would suggest to people um, who ain't up, up on it? I don't remember the title, but I know this one's like dun, 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 dun. Uh, some the A train something comes to my head, but I know it's not that song. I'll find it. Don't worry. It's, it's one of his most it. famous songs. So if you listen to any sort of Duke playlist, which I recommend, it'll it'll come on. Okay. So hey Nip, what are you been listening to? Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, we def- it's definitely not on Duke Ellington status. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed to say this shit, man. It's just <laughs> look, 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 Nip, Nip, Nip. You just you just defended a rapist skunk. Ain't nothing you gonna say at the <laughs> show. That's gonna be that's gonna be worse right now, bro. You about to just get it off, Hobie. Like, come on, man. <laughs> a I rapist skunk went your line. <laughs> Peppy didn't rape nobody, but we listen. <laughs> we don't know what happened when <laughs> that's all folks popped up. Look. <laughs> well, I'm listening to L L P L P B Pooty. Okay, I know I the it's is. bad. The drink called Batman. Listen to it; it's jamming. Don't listen okay. to it for rap lyrical content or no. No, get you a couple sips in, smoke a J, get the chill, get the grooving, and put on that L P B Pooty Batman. That joint is jamming. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. I'm a, we I'm got, a we need a, a rap naming convention because, like these these names, are just getting more out there. No, nah, it, it matches the music. It matches the music. Oh, okay. <laughs> it matches, the name <laughs> matches the music. It's like the uh, new song that you take three letters and add some sort of noun at the end, <laughs> some, some sort of adverb at the end. Yeah, <laughs> some adjective. Yeah. Corey, Corey J, what you what you listening to, Doc? Uh, actually, you know, I dropped back on that uh, no dope on Sunday, man. Sci High the Prince, man. I don't know what hit my soul, but something I was like, man, let me put on that Sci High today. And I cooked dinner, cooking, listen to that Sci High. I mean, I was in a zone so bad, I overcooked that damn burger. 
Damn. I was so in the zone listening to them lyrics, man. But now nah, I put on that um no dope on Sunday, man. So I had a prince. Shout out to him, and I know he's working with Gay right now to finish up Dondi. So mm-hmm. it's good to hear Kanye's getting back with Saha, like for real, for real. So hopefully we'll get some new heat from Kanye. But uh, yeah, if you like Kanye or if you like just real lyrical bars, blah blah, blah check out that Saha the Prince man. He's pretty much worked with everybody, and he finally did his own project, and that thing is fire, man. So um, yeah, that's what I've been listening to, man. He, he, he's been putting in work for me. Yeah, definitely go and check out his mixtapes too. He has some some dope, dope, dope mixtapes that came out. Um, but yeah, that's how high that no dope on Sundays is like that. I like that moving around. Yeah, just moving around. That, that's yeah, oh yeah, that didn't go off. Yeah, that didn't go off. <laughs> but uh before we wrap up, I just wanted to take a quick second to um thank all of our viewers, uh, especially the folks that's been commenting. We got Irvin Payne, we got Tamika. We got uh, Troy the Barber. We got Alvin Queen the uh, second. All the fans checking in and um, joining in with us as we had a good time today on this live stream. Uh, if y'all like this, definitely let us know in the comments. If you want us to do more live streams? Uh, you like the format that we we're approaching? We're kind of definitely incorporating a lot of music, but we, we definitely want to be culturally aware here and making sure that the culture is doing what it needs to do. And so if we see some out of culture activities, we're definitely going to call it out, especially all you vultures out there. So be on the lookout. Gladiator Cypher Podcast got you in the sights. But other than that, we just wanted to say, make sure you all join the circus. How do you join the circus? Like, share, subscribe, um, text your mom, your uncle, (laughs) your cousin you ain't seen in a few years, your second cousin that you really just call cousin, but you don't know how y'all related. (laughs) <laughs> Definitely just share the podcast with them. Um, get them to tune in and let us know what they say. Um, and other than that, we'll see you next week. Y'all have a good one. As always, this has been the Gladiator Cypher Podcast, a Head Cannon Circus production. Peace. Peace. I am happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. <laughs> this, this is a Head Cannon Production. Circus Production.